Thank you so much. Hi, Vikram. Hi, Sam. So uh, normally Exchange for Media does a good job, thorough job in terms of the, the validation and they do a thorough job in terms of vetting people that they get there. Uh, this time they seem to have made some mistake because I remember 2000, I was remembering 2011, uh, this city itself, I put forth a campaign uh, along with my team which was uh, No TV Day and that's about uh, 2011, right, and about 12 years back. So uh, the irony of life and fun, and maybe I think your scrutiny programs need to be slightly, slightly more rigorous. But jokes apart, I think I'll just take you through. Uh, you'll you'll have numbers enough per se. I've tried to take a little bit of a different approach in terms of talking about. Uh, not so much the traditional numbers in terms of reach, et cetera, because those numbers are public, you know. Uh, and uh, please, if there are any mistakes, you've got to blame the gentleman sitting on that table because he taught me all about media. And uh, so, so the blame goes there. Uh, so we'll, we'll start as, as we go. So I think one piece that I, I think about from a media point of view, TV point of view, I think we've got to do first principle stuff. Uh, and I agree with the previous panel, Anuj and Rag on, on the front, that I think we need to get some of those basic questions sorted in terms of what are you trying to achieve, per se. Yeah. Could we have a clicker? So the fellow to blame, if I go wrong, is uh, Sam and to an extent Vikram in terms of sorting things out. Yeah, so this is what I did about 2011, about 12, 13 years back. So uh, I think two bits which I think we've got to sort out and there is a little bit of a muddle in people's mind in terms of what we are trying to achieve, what it's, it's to me, not simply just a numbers game. It's not an Excel exercise. Uh, because you're trying to do something, you're trying to achieve something from a business point of view, right? There's a there's an end objective that is in mind. And uh, first we've got to figure out, I think very, very plain, simple English, Hindi or Punjabi, whatever frames get you simplicity as to who's your customer and what are we trying to achieve and what can the medium do in, in that sense of the word. And I think the world has moved away from a little bit of the salesmanship and selling a unique proposition to as many number of people as possible at the lowest cost possible, right? The world, in my experience, I think, of handling brands for, I think, the last 20, 25 years, I think this is not the formula that follows. And if we do only Excel stuff, uh, I think the accountants are better, and I think we can leave the job to them. Uh, this gentleman you might recognize, he got the Nobel Prize in 2002, 2014 or 11, he came out with a uh, fairly elaborate book in terms of uh, human thinking, because the first piece, the consumers that we are talking to are human beings. I think that's the first piece, they are not just wallets, they are not just cement mixers, uh, like the business that I sell in. And dealing with human beings, I think there are a few facts that you, you, need to, you need to be really, really clear of as to how do they make decisions because that's what you're trying to encourage from your business point of view. A lot of these consumers use not very hardwired Excel sheet uh, analysis in terms of making decisions, even the most complex decisions uh, in life, and that's the system one thinking that uh, this gentleman talked a lot about. And given that you people make decisions basis, uh, the number of associations that they have for a job that they have in their mind, uh, uh, therefore, I think being vivid in consumers' mind in as many ways as possible, I think that's the task for somebody to achieve. Uh, therefore, I think the two big pieces 
that the current thinking talks about is, I think, building mental availability and building physical availability. Those are the two important things rather than doing the USP and efficiency piece uh, is something that you've got to, uh, I think, really, really think about. And always remembering, uh, I think, some piece that most business leaders and marketers forget that you're always dealing with human beings and those are the people that you're trying to nudge. Uh, a lot of times, uh, and we've been guilty of that, I think businesses have uh, fallen for the, the latest shiny, ob shiny object that com comes along their way. And uh, we, we get metrics and people have gone to, I think, lead metrics and push, push those things. But we've got to remember in the complicated job that we have, at one level, I think things are very, very simple. The biggest search engine that you have as consumers is your mind. You tap the Google screen later, I think first thing that you think about is what comes to your mind. And that's what you're trying to influence in, in, in one, one fashion. So uh, rather than talk numbers, I think there are three things which I believe, and I don't believe, I think TV is a panacea, because uh, if you have a headache, uh, you've got to take the headache medicine, and, and if you have a stomach ache, the medicine has to be different. But from a TV point of view, I think three things stand out which are starkly different which is validated by a little bit of experience, little bit of numbers, and little bit of science now. I think first thing is attention, second thing is emotion, and the third thing is fame. And all those things are really, really critical from the point of view of building mental availability and building the prompt of your brand and your category when the consumer thinks of a particular problem. Now, I don't know, I'm not so sure if you can see the chart because it's slightly blurred here. Uh, what this says, uh, the latest science says that as attention goes up, uh, your business results stand up. Your top of the funnel uh, uh, numbers and the bottom of the funnel numbers both go up as if you are going through a particular media, the attention goes up. and. These are some of the numbers as to how various media stack from the point of view of, of uh, attention. So starting from the left, uh, this is what TV does, and going to the extreme right is what digital, out of home, press, etc. cetera, do. Now what this tells us is that the attention currency, while we, we buy most media from the point of view of opportunity to see and opportunity to view, and those are the very metrics that the industry has built. However, the basic piece, if you are trying to communicate to human beings and trying to build mental availability, I think attention matters quite a bit, and you are talking in very starkly different numbers as far as attention is concerned across medium when you serve your message or when you serve your proposition to people. And, uh, I think most digital mediums do not cross the, there needs to be a certain threshold in terms of attention for things to move, a message to move uh, into your memory, right? The number, uh, I think the latest neuroscience says is roughly about two and a half seconds. Unfortunately, I think most digital media does not cross that threshold. So if we are talking and it's horses for courses, because if we are talking in terms of building long-term brand building, if we are talking uh, versus, uh, if you may, harvesting uh, the business and only talking in terms of same sales conversion, then you need to go to media which is slightly more long-term and slightly more attention driving, right, rather than, rather than stuff. And the worry is that most, uh, this is the chart which, which tracks roughly about 130,000 ad views. And on digital, less than 85% brands don't cross the two and a half uh, second threshold in terms of attention giving, right? And therefore, that's something that you've got to keep in mind from the objective that you have uh, in mind. 
the second piece is, I think, and therefore, if we can all have science and huge amount of intellectual debates, if people don't see your advertising and they, it doesn't get the requisite attention, even beyond the viewability numbers that are being talked about, then all of rest is kind of pure academic stuff, right? The second piece, I think there is latest thinking that calls that the right side of the brain talks in terms of or takes in information which is slightly more vivid. It's information which is slightly context driven and that drives, that drives long term brand building and long term mental availability. And the left side of the brain, which is largely transactional, looks at stuff on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, but doesn't drive uh, too much of kind of emotion per se. And right about this time, uh, what you see the two graphs as to what various advertising over the years has been driving. And you see that curve splitting up around about the time about 2000, uh, early 2000s kind of stuff. And that's the time where you see, I think, the increase of digital advertising. What's happened so far, therefore, there's been a huge dip in terms of the effectiveness of advertising. And that coincides with how, I think, people have taken the shiny object. Digital advertising, by the way, is not bad. But how people have taken the shiny object and gone ahead and deployed it for means or deployed it for objectives which digital advertising clearly does not sell kind of stuff, right? Uh, so we've been seduced by the FOMO, we've been seduced by the free eyeball stuff, we've been seduced by having something to talk with our CFOs and saying that we have instant measurement that comes our way and therefore I think a lot of advertising has moved towards short termism, right? And we've focused largely in terms of efficiency rather than effectiveness and harvesting rather than sowing and doing long-term brand building, right? Uh, so the last piece that I'll put on board after attention and emotion is, I think it's a fairly profound, uh, I think, statement that somebody made. This gentleman, uh, Marshall McCullum, he made this statement in some, sometime in 1960s, and he said, uh, medium is the message. And I don't think we really profoundly appreciate how simple, yet really, really pointed his point, his point of view is. And the, the, the real point about this is that uh, the content of the, of a particular medium can play in, in inside only the boundaries of that particular medium, right? Uh, beyond that, so if you look at television, and television is, is entertainment, uh, you see news, you see cricket, you see soaps, all fall within the genre, within the quote unquote, it's tending towards entertainment as you would. The second piece that's very, very critical is how the medium is shifting uh, and medium is in one sense enabling, irrespective of the content, it's enabling a communal uh, experience and therefore building fame. If I take the world, uh, the 9-11 uh, piece, I, if I take Desert Storm, if I take the IPL, all those events, while there are 22 men playing on the field, you've had almost 200 million people enjoying that same communal experience at the same time, which only a medium like television can do. And therefore, television builds huge amount of fame. And these three uh, principles, if you may, uh, of attention, of, uh, of emotion, and the third piece of fame are things which are embedded into the medium itself. While numbers might go up in terms of penetration or come down, I think because we are dealing with human beings and because we are dealing with a medium, I think those principles remain the same and therefore, uh, uh, for the right reason in terms of brand building, long-term brand building, 
there doesn't seem to be an equivalent comparison uh, to television as of now or the large screen as of now because it's a it's a it's a stand back medium where i give and engage with that particular medium and allow messages to come to you and therefore enable the ability to do uh, uh, to to do uh, if you may mental availability and and long term brand building right uh, last piece i think there is i think peter field and let winner net have called that we have been in this business in terms of rather than doing long term brand building which does the top of the funnel work as well as the as well as the incremental work we focus largely on things which are which are in the harvesting mode and only in terms of efficiency and not looking at the long term play right uh, tv does that job reasonably well you've got to keep the faith and not keep things moving up and down all the time right uh so that's all that i had to say these three things from a tv learning point of view any questions you can direct at the gentleman there he'll 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 help you answer those questions but happy to take a comment or two